Oh man, I love that song. That is a band called Smoke Out Vinyl from Chicago. The song is called Home. Uh, I cannot believe that that song's like 24 years old. I recorded that band at Illinois State University in Fell Hall, I think like right before, sadly, 9-11. Uh, first band to like come play acoustic in our studios in like forever. So thank you for that band for letting me use their song for this podcast. Uh, this is the 78 podcast. My name is Tom Barnes. So thank you very much for listening and going over to the website stories from the 78.com. I post about six stories a week on the page and they bring me all over the place. Really? You know, I travel far or near, but mostly in Chicago And this particular week, I had the pleasure of interviewing two amazing women. One of them, her name is Amy Bizzari. She wrote this book, The Best Hits on the Blues Highway. Sorry, I have to read that backwards. I'm looking at this thing. The Best Hits on the Blues Highway. Amy Bizzari, incredible storyteller. And she writes about her uh, journey down Route 61 uh, from Nashville to New Orleans. And why is that important, Route 61? Well, if you know anything about Route 66, you know like how Americana Route 66 is, right? So Amy Bazzari writes this incredible book that with these amazing tales that she kind of finds and discovers in a month-long journey to the South. And Route 61 is kind of this super highway, if you will, of blues music. It travels through some of the best cities and states that gave us the blues. And those blues happened to make their way up to Chicago because Chess Records was in Chicago on South Michigan Avenue. And Chess Records recorded some of the most legendary blues artists and music ever recorded. So much so, and this is where we're going to go on a tangent here, so much so that the Rolling Stones were inspired by this music to the point where the Stones came to Chicago and recorded at Chess Records because of all their heroes that recorded there, including like Howlin' Wolf, Buddy Guy, Muddy Waters, you know, Etta James, John Lee Hooker, all of these bands, some of them in the Blues Brothers, if you will, recorded at Chess Records. But uh, one of the stories I wanted to tell you about uh, in Amy's book right here is about the crossroads. <laughs> The crossroads of the South. It, it, it's lore that goes back to you know almost a hundred years ago, really. You know, because there's legend has it that a artist named Robert Johnson, blues artist from the South, he was not a very good blues player. In fact, he was pretty bad, and people were astounded that it seemed like overnight he became an amazing blues artist. So much so that we st- still talk about him today. And the funny thing about the crossroads is it's a place that's known where people go to do things or make deals, if you will, uh, in exchange for your soul. So much so that a show called Supernatural that was on the CW from 2005 to 2015, my favorite show of all time, there's an episode and a character that stems from the crossroads, the crossroad demon named, um, oh, I'm going to forget his name now. It's going to come to him. Crowley. There we go. Crowley. The, one of the main characters of that ep, that show for years it was the Crossroad Demon, and that's where they go to make their uh, deals with the devil in exchange for your soul. That is allegedly what Robert Johnson did, and I think it's just a fun, amazing story about what people are willing to believe, what people are willing to do to get famous or to just be really good at something. And Robert Johnson was an incredible blues artist, but not before this moment in time where all this story came out about it, or he was just a really smart marketing genius back in the day where he thought of a great story to get people to take him seriously. And he just worked his ass off and trying to become one of the best blues artists of all time. I digress. Either way, it's all documented in Amy's book. Amy, amazing storyteller. She's written a few books that are about things that happen in Chicago and other places. This one, though, is phenomenal. She had a book signing and intro at Chess Records. We got to learn about the amazing history of Chess Records. And that will be another story for another day, but I'll delve into two fun stories. Um, there was a gentleman that was like the Barry Gordy of chess records, you know, cause chess was owned by the chess brothers, but Willie Dixon was like the super producer. He like had this vision of who would sound great on certain albums or working with other artists. People would go to him or go to chess. And then they say, Hey, you know, we really have this person, but we think it would be good with this person. Willie Dixon would be like, I'll figure that out. I'll arrange it. You know? So he would arrange the music, write the music. 
and he was just a badass. And the, we wouldn't have the great music we have that came out of Chicago without Willie Dixon or the or the Chess Brothers for that matter. But one of the stories that I love is the song Johnny Be Good by Chuck Berry. We all know that song, right? And we love it, and you hear it all the time in movies and whatnot and or on the radio. But Willie Dixon made him rehearse that song. I think it was 47 times before they recorded it. That was just rehearsing it, not to mention then to record it, you know. And back then, you kind of needed to record it in one take, you know. They didn't really do what we have now where you can do it everything right here on a computer. But that was like Willie Dixon. And there's a whole thing inside of Chess Workers that's kind of devoted to him. Great story about him. But then, you know, and I mentioned the other people that have recorded there, like Etta James, who sang the song At Last, the song that President Obama and Mrs. Obama danced to at the inauguration. And then you have uh, Benny Goodman, Muddy Waters. I mentioned Chuck Berry. And then, you know, Bo Diddley and Howlin' Wolf also recorded there. And, uh, you know, started off in Tennessee, made their way up to Chicago. And this became this thing. And the last story I'll leave with Chess Records is the Rolling Stones were inspired by blues out of Chicago, something that I didn't know until much later in life, uh, probably when, at a point in time where I really respected music and really understood it outside of my hair metal grunge phase, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, blues music, such an important American music category i think it chicago doesn't get its due for what it did for that type of music back then especially you know willie dixon and uh what he did in like creating this atmosphere so the story goes is that the rolling stones were super excited they wanted to come to the states this is very early on in their career and they wanted to record at chess records in chicago to pay homage to their blues heroes including you know, Willie Dixon, John Lee Hooker, Bo Diddley, all of these uh, amazing blues artists. So the legend has it that uh, Willie Dixon always dressed at the nines, always in like great looking suits and the whole thing. And the Rolling Stones knew that. So, you know, the Stones come to Chess Records, you know, Willie Dixon invites them in. Willie Dixon's dressed to the nines. He's helping them carry some of his gear up the stairs to get up to the stairs. The Stones are also dressed to the nines because they want to impress their hero who is Willie Dixon and others that were at the studio on that particular day. And um, the, oh, where is the song? Oh, here it is. Okay. So um, they get into the recording studio. The Stones are setting up all of their equipment. And at Chess Records, you have the studio overlooking the, or I should say the control room overlooks the studio. It's a small space. space. Uh, the walls are designed certain angles for sound the entire space way ahead of its time in terms of in terms of its design its acoustics i mean the floor is on springs here at chess record so it's a legendary place just from an engineering standpoint let alone the musicians that have played there so you got the rolling stones that are on the the or inside the studio and you have all these legendary blues guys that are in the control room looking at the stones so legend has it that the Rolling Stones wanted to record a song. So they record the song and they're so intimidated. They're so nervous that they don't sing because they forgot the words. They were so intimidated by these blues legends looking at them. Little did they know that these blues legends were intimidated by the Rolling Stones because of how big and great they were and what they've turned out to be as their career. Um, but the song is called 2120 South Michigan Avenue. And uh, that is the address of Chess Records. And that's why they called it that. There were supposed to be lyrics to it they never ended up recording lyrics to that song because allegedly the story goes that the Stones were so intimidated that they forgot. And I just love that story. It's just one of many of the stories that come out of Chess Records that are from the book, The Best Hits on the Blues Highway. My friend Amy Bizzari wrote that incredible book. Another fun and fascinating interview I did was with a woman named Cindy Fee. Uh, she was the voice of the Golden Girls, the song, Thank You for Being a Friend. Thank you for being a friend. I can't sing, so that's all I'm doing for you. But she wrote, uh, she didn't write the song. Another gentleman wrote it, but she sang it and became popular. She also was the voice behind many jingles from back in the day, like including Hoover Vacuums, uh, Pontiac, Wheaties. She was like the voice of the 80s among you had this huge... Um, uh, TV show that is more popular now than it was when it was actually on TV. And that's saying something because it was popular back in the day. Um, but during the pandemic, people found the Golden Girls again, and it found another generation so much so that Cindy is 
continually surprised at the fact that the young women and men that find her show that love her love her love the show Golden Girls and love the song. Uh, and so she wanted to do a one woman show to talk about her career because she's never written a book about it. She doesn't really talk about her career much, but this is a woman that is recorded with uh, Dolly Parton and um, uh, Kenny Rogers and many, many other people that are the higher echelon of the musical industry. I mean, Whitney Houston, and she has some stories that are great stories about working with with musicians and maybe uh, interesting stories about people in the music industry that she encountered. Either way, it's in this one woman show that happened here and debuted here in Chicago at the Venus Cabaret Theater that is at the Mercury Theater. And uh, she's fa fascinating. She sang the song for me when we did the interview right there, just us in the room. And it was one of my favorite things I've ever done. And I met her at a chance moment when I was at an opening for the Golden Girls pop-up restaurant that happened here in Chicago in like the Bucktown neighborhood. And if you remember that, it was a lot of fun. They kind of recreated the set. But Cindy was there, and I recognized the gentleman. His name is Zach, who does Golden Con, and he started it. He's a Chicago guy. He started it. And he found her by like old school journalism, looking for her and finding records and calling this person that knew this person that knew that person that knew Cindy's husband. And he got her on and he's kind of like brought her into the center, you know, uh, the spotlight, if you will, on her career being known by many. So I love the story. Cindy Fee, a wonderful woman. She has that soulful voice. And when she talks, you, you're like, oh, I know that voice. Oh, I know. And then she sings one of the, the songs or the jingle. And uh, it's just ah, it's a lot of fun. And it was one of my uh, another great story uh, to be able to tell from a fantastic woman. And it was just outstanding. So, um, yeah, I really love that one. And uh, the, a couple other stories, because it was like a holiday week last week, go, rolling into a holiday weekend, I should say, rolling into Memorial Day talked about going over to camp for the Bluey exhibit, which debuts the Midwestern debut in Chicago at camp right there on North Avenue in Lincoln Park, where it meets Old Town. And if you have kids of a certain age, you're going to love it. So uh, I get a little tour of that. So I walk through that space. Fantastic. A lot of fun. And it was also summer festival season in Chicago, where we talked about May Festiversary. <laughs> I think I said that right. Eighth annual. It is Dovetail and Beguile Breweries, where they throw on their own festival. All the money goes to a charity, and all the beer that they sell goes to the breweries. There's no, like, ticket fees or any of, the, any of that crap. So that's amazing. And it's a free thing to go to. Also talked about the Belmont Sheffield uh, Music Fest that is right there in the Lakeview neighborhood. Fantastic event. Rod Tough Curls in the Bench Press. If you've never seen that band they're fantastic. They're a great cover band, and it's a, a lot of fun up there. And uh, I, I'll leave you with the last thing I did for uh, this week, and that was the opening of Castaways. And if you're not familiar with Castaways, it's uh, that restaurant that looks like a boat at North Avenue Beach. There's a similar one at Montrose Beach, but much smaller, though. So the one at North Avenue Beach is legendary. It's a place that generations of Chicagoans would go like you're 23 years old, you're going to North Avenue Beach. Even if you live in Beverly, you're making the trek to North Avenue Beach because that's where you go. That is the thing. And then you get to a certain age where you're like, mm. and then you get past that age and then you're like, yeah, it's a cool place. I want to go check it out. Maybe I'll only go there once a summer and then depending on where you live and what you want out of your beach time. But that is the place to be in terms of to be seen the food, uh, the Stefani restaurant kind of bought or, or not bought because it's owned by the park district, but they reopened Castaways from Castaways Bar to Castaways Beach Club and open right there at North Avenue Beach. A lot of fun uh, and also great views of the city. You have like you look off to your right if you're looking towards the east. You got downtown. You got the lake right there with the sun coming up. And that's what the video is. The video that I posted and a little story about what you can expect when you eat there and all that fun stuff. And they have a lot of events happening there. But the, the video is just the sunrise when I was there. And it was an incredible time. We actually covered it for CVS Chicago. Did a whole live segment with it. But a lot of fun. And I would highly recommend heading out to Castaways. Because of all the crap that people talk about Chicago. And there's a lot of crap. 
that people talk about Chicago. This is one of the most amazing things about Chicago. I feel like a lot of movies don't get this for some reason. And sometimes it pisses me off because there are so many different vantage points of downtown Chicago that movies or TV shows can show or that, that, that vibe of what it is to live in Chicago. And they just miss the mark constantly and castaways in the whole lake vibe, the, the beach front, if you will, the lake front uh, is something that a lot of shows just don't get. They don't, they like put people in the wrong spot. They cut to different things where it's not even a true way that the movie can be filmed or the TV show can be filmed, but castaways is a spot. And if you want that vibe, but you don't want the the amount of people that might be at North Avenue Beach on a Saturday, go up north to Montrose Beach or hell, even go down to Rainbow Beach near 63rd Street. And uh, you got plenty of those options with less p- people, if you will. So that is the uh, kind of what I covered for the week. Oh, and I forgot one other thing. And just because it's just this random what the hell is this kind of a moment? I was up in Milwaukee at summer Summerfest one year and I was checking out the Foo Fighters, walked along the river walk there because they have a nice river walk in Milwaukee. I didn't know that, but they have the bronze Fonz, which is Fonzie, you know, from Happy Days. There's a statue of the Fonz up there. There's also, you see like bronze ducks up on the river walk there and you don't know why. And it's right by like the, I think it's the third ninth ward, third ward, whatever. It's a ward. That's a thing right by Summerfest where they, it's kind of like, I would say the closest version to the West loop is this area of Milwaukee. Um, and they have these ducks and the story is Gertie, the duck. And it was a world war two story about how they had to stop construction. Their whole thing. Anyhow, there's like these bronze ducks along the river walk in Milwaukee. So you want to learn more about that? Check out this story. It's called the story of Gertie, the duck on Milwaukee's river walk. So those are the stories posted on the stories from the 78 website. Another story about a muralist that did some great stuff too, but I, I'll leave you with that for now. So uh, I will talk to you next week. I appreciate you listening. Tell your friends, tell your grandma. I don't care. Just tell whoever who wants to hear about fun stories from I appreciate it very much, and I will see you guys next week. 